Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to program a Beofing uh, UV5R radio uh, importing a CSV of the frequencies. Um, so this is basically how I do it every time. Uh, first thing always is go get the latest build of Chirp. I've already done that, so I'm going to go ahead and just open Chirp up. Alright, so in here is where you're able to you know, import files. So if I was to go open... I wanted to import my IC2 file. You know, I'd have the the IMG file here and all my settings there. The problem is, is you can't take those IMG files and transfer them to other radios. What you can do though is download the file directly from the radio and import the frequencies of them, the table of frequencies and the settings for those. Um, so that's what I'm going to show you to do today. So let's go ahead and get started here. Go ahead and turn my radio on. I'm going to go up to radio and download from radio. Uh, I'm going to pick the port that it's on. Mine is on COM3. Depending on where you plug in the cable to USB, it could be COM1, COM2. Obviously, Beofang and my model UV5R. Oh, it can't open the port. There's an error. So this is a common error that everyone runs into and even I run into. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And what you need to do is you need to go into your device manager. In your device manager, you're going to see that the prolific uh, COM port has an exclamation point next to it, and that means that the driver isn't there. You want to do update driver, browse my computer, let me pick from a list of drivers. And so because I've just recently installed this here, it's going to be here, but you'll see a prolific USB to serial COM port version uh, 73107. If you don't see this here, what you need to do is there is a link, and I have the driver, but it's called the Win Driver Prolific 3200. And all you do is you basically hit install on this one here. It's going to ask you where to install it. Just click next a couple times through it and it installs. Once it installs, what you have to do is unplug the cable with the radio off and plug it back in. Uh, this will help, will have it recognize that it's there. So if you do that then, once it gets plugged back in, update driver software, browse my computer, let me pick from a list, click that version and hit next. It should be there. If it's not, try to uninstall and reinstall it again. So once you're done there, now you can see there's no exclamation point and it looks like it's good. So I'm going to go ahead and close this here. Radio again is turned on. I'm going to turn it off again and show you that I'm turning it on. There you go. See it light up. Download from radio. Okay, now it's cloning. Lights going. Cloning over. So because I've done this radio already, uh, in the first take of this video, you're going to see all the frequencies there. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and try to basically delete all of them. There you go. Now my radio has zero frequencies or anything. Nothing's there. So first thing I want to do though is run through some settings that would be a good idea for you to program to. I've used these exact same settings on every uh, event for the past 11 for AMS and I've never had issues getting in uh, communication with any other squad, with command, or with our personal team. So you can pause it here and have the same settings. Um, here's the advanced settings page. Again, these are settings that I have tested in the past 11 events, uh, and I have never had an issue with comms. Uh, so go ahead and make sure that you set these to these. Pause the video if uh, I'm clicking through these too fast. Um, on this page here, other settings, there is a power on message 1 and a power on message 2. Not to be confused with the 6 plus power on message 1 and 6 plus power message 2. This is the two right below that. Here I have Toga, and then I have Nook, since this is my brother's radio. Um, it's a good thing to put your team affiliation in here and then your call sign just in case the radio gets lost. The minute you turn it on, you'll see that come up and then you can obviously say, hey, this is so-and-so from so-and-so's radio and you can get it back to them. If you're wondering what a couple of these settings are, I don't know. Uh, I got them from a friend that programmed these when we first started. Um, you know, what I do know here is... Uh, these channels, I think it's these frequencies, are going to be the ones that appear on the radio when you first import this here and turn it on. Um, 
obviously if you change it once it's there it's going to stay those uh, but this here is just from the file this is what it's going to be FM radio preset you're here in St. Louis 105.7 the point uh, if it's anything else well okay uh, here we go another list of settings here again pause the video if you want to copy these down and the last page so I don't want to make this too long but it's probably very long anyway okay so let's go here so now I've downloaded this here uh, file directly to chirp and this is where people get confused they think oh I can just open up another IMG file and copy it no you can't so you gotta go to file and import and what we're looking for here I have mine under Beofan configs folder change the file type to CSV and here I've got op34 and it's gonna say yep do you want to import all these click OK and boom there they are that's it they're done they're imported you're done okay so after that if you want to change the names or anything you can change them here but just go ahead and make sure the radio is on upload to radio hit OK and as you can see you got a green light flashing over on the radio that means it's cloning to it So now that that's done, the radio's rebooting. Go ahead and turn that one off. So that that file is only good for that radio. So I'm gonna go ahead and close it. No, I don't want to change the files because I've already saved it. Radio number two, my radio, my big radio that I use. Go ahead and plug her in there. Radio on. Again, download from radio. Yep. Alright, so again, I already did this one in a previous take, uh, so the frequencies are already there. The settings are all the same, so let's go ahead and do the exact same thing I did before. Highlight them all. And I'm just going to hit the delete button. There you go. They're not there anymore. So go ahead and hit import. Again, change the file because it's going to be in chirp. Find the op34 team. Hit open. Hit OK. Programmed. So go ahead and hit upload to radio, go. And then since our team is Echo 1, uh, I'm going to go ahead and change it to Echo 1 on the small radio. And again, if you have the uh, settings right, it should actually show you the channel, not the frequency. Um, there's a setting in the advanced settings, I think it is, that shows channel, not frequency. So channel, what it's going to show you is, <clears throat> I don't know if you could see this here, uh, you see it actually has a name it's not a frequency so I got E1 and the bottom one is ACC2 whatever that is on there so I'm gonna go ahead and unplug it here uh, on this one here I'm actually gonna plug in my headset so I don't want to be too loud yeah, that's pretty good this one to E1 alright so now let's go ahead and run through some quick tests here medium settings okay uh, so I'm going from this radio to this radio so hand mic to this <laughs> too loud this this is a test this is a test so as you can see I got a blue signal going to it and you can see that's working <clears throat> let's go back the other way small radio big radio this this is a test this is a test so I got good communication going back and forth so that's it um, it works. So if you do it exactly like this here, you're going to have good communication for 34, uh, and you won't have to come to me to program it. If you can do this yourself, this is awesome. And like I said, it's really just figuring out the first time. Um, and after that, it's, it's really easy. You just download the version once you have it there um, from your radio and import the new uh, frequencies, the new CSV, and then you're done. Uh, I saved mine. I didn't show you guys to save it here, but, you know, file... Uh, do save as. Here's all my previous chirps or IMG files for chirp for the different events that, that we've attended. The only reason I keep those there is just in case um, I need to change something or I need to look back for one of those events. Obviously I know my radio versus my brother's radio. 
they have to use different files. Um, but again, it's just as quick to pull one of those up and import the file as it is to download from the from the radio. So, all right, that's it. That's good. Uh, if you have any questions, comment, uh, and I'll try to answer them for you. See you on the field.